Hey everybody, JJ here. Uh, just want to welcome you to another one of our Wednesday Zoom networkings, uh, you know, presentations with a guest speaker. Today's guest speaker is unbelievable. You know, I, I've been uh, doing the real estate networking thing for three and a half years now. I've been hosting these Zoom calls and getting guest speakers in for over two years now. And, you know, when it gets to real estate, you meet a lot of folks and you, you need, you, you network. And as you network, uh, you'll meet people that are really, really special. And um, you don't meet them unless you make a point to meet them. And when I say network, you need to network with intention. You need to be memorable so you're not forgotten. But most importantly, when you network, it's important that you lead with your heart, lead with who you truly are, and, and you know, don't have any false pretenses about yourself. Um, because I've networked, because I've put myself out there, because I've created my own brand, people have come to know me. And the benefit of that is running into people that are exceptional. And today's guest speaker is exactly that person. Uh, I've had the honor and privilege to meet a gentleman uh, that I now am fortunate enough to call a friend. And I'm looking forward to taking him to Dodger Stadium. But uh, with no further ado, let me introduce my good friend, Count John Shen. John, how are you doing today? Fired up, JJ. Fired up. Cool, bro. Hey, I am so excited for you to be here. I really am. Yes, me too. Excited to be with everyone. So we were talking before the call started a little bit. And um, one of the things you were talking about was uh, like versus trust. Do, do you yes. want, want to touch on that? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's amazing. You know, every time I go out, I'll do a lot of talks. And the question I ask is, I'll say, what is more important? Is it trust or is it likability? And when I ask the question and I'll say, how many people will say trust? And I'll say, raise your hand, everyone, raise your hand. And 90% plus will say trust. Okay. And I'll say, great. How many of you guys say likability? A few hands will go up. And then I'll say, how many of you guys will ra not raise your hand no matter what I ask? And a few more hands go up, okay? So, but the majority will say, you know, trust. So here's the thing, ladies, when a guy walks up to you and says, can I get your phone number? Do you say, yes, call me. I can't wait tomorrow. You know, like even call me tonight. You know, you, we, we rarely do that, okay? Because you trust that person. You know, you, and so you're not going to give your social, you're not giving your date of birth, you're not going to give out your account numbers to your personal financial information. So here's what you do. You do give out your phone numbers sometimes, but why? It's because of likability. See, they're both important, but one has to come before the other. When I say they're both important, trust and likability, both are important. However, one has to come before the other. OK, and for in my professional opinion, I believe that likability has to come before trust. Therefore, I say trust makes time like excuse me, trust takes time, but likability makes time. OK, so here's the thing. When JJ and I first met and I appreciate a motto connecting the two of us. And we, we had a brief call we, and, you know, you know, I'm not sure how much you can get from a conversation, but you can kind of get a little bit, but not a whole lot. And so we, JJ says, Hey, I'd love to have you on my show. I, I'd love to have you drop some big old, you know, bombshells to my, uh, my, my tribe. And I said, I'd be honored to. And he goes, but I want to meet you, you know, with all due respect, you know, I, don't, I mean, I know you got a lot of money. You're very successful. That's great. But honestly, I got to see what kind of person you are. See, he wanted to check out the character, not the bank account. He wanted to check out the character. How do you check out somebody's character? The vibrations, right? It's the energy I give up. So as soon as we sat down at a restaurant called King's, and I know some of you said, I love King's, and we should all go and hang out at King's, okay? And, uh, and I'll buy. If you guys come and have lunch with JJ and I, I'll buy whatever's on the menu. Does that make sense? Really? If you guys give me the money, I'll buy whatever you guys want. All right. So <laughs> I'm kidding. So anyway, so JJ and I sat down. It was supposed to be like an hour meeting, lunch meeting. We were there for three and a half freaking hours, right? Why? Because I liked him. He liked me. There was likability. 
Otherwise, he would have said, hey, guys, uh, you know, let's, you know, grab a bite. And let's just uh, I got to get to another meeting. And I even said that I told my staff the same thing. And he would have gone on his awesome motorcycle and rode away. OK, so here's the thing. We hung out because we had a meeting of the minds. We had the right connection. Does that make sense? And when I started hearing JJ's story, I was like, oh, my God, this guy is he, he could have, he could be charging money for this kind of stuff. But he doesn't. He just wants to bring value. And he's very cautious because the integrity of who does he want to pe put people in front of his tribe? And that's important. It's not like just the name. It's not some celebrity. It was who is this person? Is this person authentic? You know, here's the problem with a lot of people in the world we live in today is they go and see a Ferrari or Rolls Royce. They get their stupid phone and they stand in front of it doing a little selfie thing. And they go, how would you like to own one of these? You know, basically implying and insinuating to the world that they have one of those fancy, nice cars. And so you know what the problem with that? That's the world we live in. Everybody is about fake it until you make it. Have you heard that one before? Fake it until you make it. That is nonsense, everybody. Nonsense. Let me tell you what I think you should do. You know, Napoleon Hill says in chapter two that, the, the you know, and we'll talk about Napoleon Hill if you're not familiar with who Napoleon Hill is. He wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich. And he says in chapter two, he says, faith, the word faith, right, is one of the ingredients of success. So here's what I tell everybody. Instead of faking it until you make it, I want you to faith it until you make it. Would you please write that down? Faith it until you make it. Because I know JJ's had faith. I know I had faith. Right. And so I know that some of you guys maybe not so spiritual and you don't believe in all that stuff, but I do. I really do. OK. And so I really encourage everybody to read the book, Think and Grow Rich. So I read this book in 1994, everybody. You know, my wife and I, we, we uh, grew up in a very traditional family and traditional means Asian parents, tiger mom, who basically gives you the guilt trip about how they were broke. They grew up in Korea with no shoes and they hardly had any rice. And, you know, they came seeking the American dream. And, and I'm sure a lot of your parents made you feel guilty too, right? All the tough times they went and why everything is on you. The burden is on you. And my mother and father said, you have to go to college and get a degree and become a doctor or a lawyer. And so I was respectful. I was obedient. And I did exactly as my parents did. My sister became a doctor. Uh, I don't think they were very clear as to what kind of doctor. So she became a PhD doctor. Okay. And so I also have a PhD, everybody. Okay. Uh, it's a public high school diploma. And uh, my sister, <laughs> it's a joke, you guys. No, I, yeah. <laughs> so, but my sister got a real legitimate PhD, super smart. And she's now, everyone, the first female, first woman, and the first Asian to become a dean at Pepperdine University. And many of you have probably heard of Pepperdine University. So my sister is the dean over there now. So anyway, I, I, I met my wife and she basically, you know, I proposed, got down on my knees and uh, we got married. Then we decided to start our own business because we realized that having a job was not going to take us to the financial freedom that we wanted. And so we went, we asked a bunch of people for advice. Nobody wanted to give us our advice. You know, they said, you got to work hard, you know, things like that. But I, but I, I wanted like real content, like how to become successful. And so we decided to go to a bookstore and we picked up this book right here called Think and Grow Rich. And we had no idea what it was about. We came home, we got two copies, one for her and one for me. We began reading it. And she got something out of it. I got something different out of it. And next thing you know, we're like, oh my God, this is so good. We read the book and we started applying all the principles. Now, if you're not familiar, familiar with this book called Think and Grow Rich written by Napoleon Hill, I really encourage you to get it because Napoleon Hill went out there and he basically interviewed some of the greatest minds on the face of this planet, okay? Andrew Carnegie commissioned young Napoleon Hill at the age of 25 excuse me, to go and interview some of these greatest industrial giants. And then he came back and he said, listen, he's figured out the 13 common denominators and put it into this book, Think and Grow Rich. And now this book is the only book that has now crossed over 200 million copies around the world. 
It's only one that's documented as 200 million copies sold around the world. Now, just to give you an idea, there are only three books that has crossed over other than Think and Grow Rich, has crossed over to the uh, 100 million mark, which is Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and the Twilight Saga. That's it, okay? So here's this book, and as you know, three out of these four have become a theatrical movie except for one that never became a movie. And you know what that movie is? It's this one right here. This is the only book that never became a theatrical movie. So here's what happened is I, my wife and I were sitting there in our kitchen, and I said, you know, I said, uh, we should get the kids to read this book. And she says, I don't think the kids are going to read it. If it's not a podcast or YouTube or something, I don't think they're going to read a book. And I go, that's so sad. She says, well, maybe they'll watch the movie. And I go, whoa, wait, there's a movie on this original book? She goes, I'm sure there is. I mean, 200 million copies. Someone has to have made the movie. And so long story short, we called the Napoleon Hill Foundation and find out that no one ever made a movie based on this original book. So there lies an opportunity where I said, can I get the rights then? And that's, you know, long story short, if I can make a movie based on the original book. And guess what? In 2013, I got the contract and the movie came out. I've never made a movie in my entire life. And in 2018, uh, the movie came out. We had a theatrical release with AMC theaters and Regal Cinemas. And I made a motion picture movie, you guys. We've won a ton of different awards out there. And uh, it was crazy. And then next thing I know, you got these big companies asking us to come and speak at their national conventions. So we, nobody really wanted to do public speaking. And everybody said, John, why don't you go? John, why don't you go? And I'm like, me? I go, man, I got so much on my plate. And they're like, you be the best. The so next thing I know, I get booked. I go and I speak at the national convention. I get off the stage and everyone says, what is the name of your book? You know, and those of you that have done any kind of public speaking, you know what I'm talking about, where you get off the stage, everybody wants to come and take a selfie, get your business card, all that. And the first question everybody said, what's the name of your book? And I said, if you give me your business card, I will send you a copy or just write it down. If you don't have a business card, your, your email, and I'll send you a copy. And next thing I know, I came home and my wife said, how did the event go? And I said, it's amazing. And I said, look at all these emails. And she's like, why do you have all these emails? And I said, because I told all these people that I would send them a book. And she says, so, well, now what are you going to do with all these emails? And I said, well, she says, what book? You don't have a book. And I said, I know that's why I got to write a book. And so I got into writing a book, everybody, right? Because I have to send 2000 uh, copies out to people that I've never met in my life. And so we did all the, you know, you know, obviously retail and Netflix and so forth. So now there are different versions of Thinking Grow Rich. There's a Black Choice Latino and one for women. Sharon Lecter did, uh, she was also the co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And so I was thinking, who did the Asian version of this? You know, there's a Black Latino and, uh, and uh, for women, I'm like, who did Asian? And so I Googled it, couldn't find it. I called up the foundation and I said, uh, who did the Think and Grow Rich by uh, an Asian choice. And they said, John, we don't have one. I'm like, what? Four billion Asians on this planet and no one has gotten the rights to do this with you in the foundation? They said, no. I said, I think uh, I'm your guy. And literally three days later, I got the email from Don Green and I became the author of Think and Grow Rich and Asian Ch Choice with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And uh, next thing I know, poof, the book became... I mean, it was like an overnight sensation, you know? And so we got picked up by a national book uh, publishing company and they wanted to change the title. They called it How Rich Asians Think, a thinking grow rich publication. And all of a sudden there was a movie called Crazy Rich Asians that came out at the same time. And so when they saw Crazy Rich Asians on Amazon and you know, I learned all about algorithms, people who bought Crazy Rich Asians also bought how rich Asians think. It was like a combination started blowing up all over the world. Next thing I know, I get calls from Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, and they're offering me $100,000, $150,000 to go out there and do a 90 minute keynote speech. I mean, it's like, are you, are you kidding me? I would have gone for free. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that, it just happened like that. And then in my book, I interviewed some amazing people. Um, you know, whatever you personally think about these people, it's more like, how did, you know, how do these people get to where they're at? 
How did Steve Aoki, the highest paid DJ in the world, the son of Steve, uh, the son of uh, Rocky Aoki, who is the founder of all the Benihana restaurants, now is now the highest paid DJ in the world, making forty five million a year. So the question I get from everybody is, John, how did this? How, how did you get the rights for the movie and the book? Ready for this? I want you to write this down. Here we go. I'm gonna give you guys a secret right now. I'm gonna drop a bombshell. You ready? Here it is. Ask without fear. Would you write that down, please? Ask without fear. See, a lot of you guys, you, you're just so scared to ask someone for help because if you ask for help, maybe you're incompetent. Maybe you're, 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 there's something wrong with you, right? Let me just tell you, I can tell you that both JJ and I we have no problem asking for help. Could you help me out? I get that all the time. I know somebody that I know somebody. I was like, hey, brother, can you help me out? Can you connect me with that guy? Hey, uh, can you connect me with that person? Can you? And people what? They love connecting people. Okay. And so one of the things I want you to do is I want you to ask without fear. Can you imagine 4 billion Asians? Not one person had the courage to call the foundation and see if they can write a book with the foundation. And I did. I asked without fear. I asked them, can I make a movie based on your original movie, your original book? And they said, yes, ask without fear, right? And so this is what can happen to you if you would just ask. Of course, now my book is in the bookshelves at the airports. I'm in Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, all over the world. It's in multiple languages now, okay? And then I decided to go on a tour. So I go on this tour, everybody, talking about how to become an author, how to talk about all these different things here. <laughs> and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but this is my expertise in all these different areas. Okay. And on my stage, I had people like Condoleezza Rice. I had Barbara Corcoran, right? I had Les Brown. I had Martin Sheen. We had Rob Geerdick. We had Stedman Graham. Y'all know who Stedman is? He's the other half of Oprah Winfrey. Now, this is not a selfie that I had with Stedman because I met him down on the sidewalk somewhere. I'm like, hey, can I get a picture with you? This is a picture in my house. Stedman flew out from Chicago to come to my home to have a meeting with me because he's all about thinking grow rich. And so is Oprah Winfrey. Okay. So they come to my home and Stedman's like 6'6 and I'm 5'8. Cause you're looking at that picture like, damn, John, he's 6'6. How tall are you? And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. And this is the benefit of having folding chairs from Costco. I recommend them for you guys, okay? <laughs> so Stedman, oh my God, man. I mean, him and Oprah, they rock, okay? And so they're in my house and there was just supposed to be an hour and a half meeting and we, they were here for nine hours in my home, okay? And, uh, I, you know, Steve Aoki is in my book. He's also in the movie Think and Grow Rich. Uh, Mario Lopez, I mean, you guys remember like... Uh, how many of you guys grew up with Mario Lopez in your television? Okay. Yeah. And so Mario calls, he's like, dude, can I have you on my podcast, bro? He's like, I love thinking grow rich. Then I met him. I got on his podcast. And you know what he says to me? I said, Mario. He goes, dude. He goes, you know what he says to me? He goes, hey, dude. He goes, calls me, dude. Dude, can you imagine? You got a Mexican and a Korean guy that grew up in East LA. I mean, can you imagine? I'm like, let me ask you a question, Mario. Would you write a book with me? And he goes, dude, I'd be honored. So now Mario and I are co-authoring a book together, okay? And then, of course, he came to most of my Thinking Grow Rich events. I mean, isn't that crazy? You guys know what I mean by ask without fear. Okay, and then guess what? I get this crazy call, and, uh, and if I have more time, I explain to you. But, but long story short, my wife and I, we both got knighted by the friends from Spain, okay? And so this is me getting knighted. This is my wife who was knighted. And then get this. I got knighted. We both got knighted September 2019. Then after we got knighted, uh, I became a count, everyone. Okay. Uh, that's another long story. We become a count. Um, man, you know who else I think should be a knight is JJ, you know. But uh, you guys, look at this. Let, let me just tell you who's who's been knighted by the same prince, okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys know a lady named Paula Abdul knighted by the royal prince okay sir ken rupowski knighted all right sir dr paul nasi he's the plastic surgeon for the kardashians knighted okay big hollywood plastic surgeon dr bill dorfman this guy is the guy who created the teeth whitening product that some of you guys have may have used if you go to a dentist this is what they tell you to use 
Um, and he's the creator. It sold it for a lot of money. Uh, this is Sir Jim Quick, knighted by the same prince. Ray Parker Jr. just got knighted this weekend. Uh, a lot of you guys may not know him, but uh, he's the one who wrote the song. Who are you going to call? Come on. Ghostbusters. Yeah, that guy. Okay. He was knighted this weekend, man. Uh, Steve Aoki, knighted. System of a Down, knighted. It's a rock group. Some of you guys may not know them, right? Sir Rolando Blackman, okay, knighted. Former Dallas Mavericks, okay? Tony Braxton, knighted, okay? Look at all the other lists of names. Darren Jacklin, this guy sits on the board, the executive board of a company called EXP Realty, one of the fastest growing real estate companies, right? Billy Dorsey, uh, Academy Award winner. Uh, the CEO, by the way, of EXP, a guy named Jason was at our event this weekend. Uh, Derek Mills, Olympic gold medalist. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, there's a guy named um, uh, Alec Stern. Uh, Alec Stern is the co-founder, uh, billionaire, sold his company for $1.1 billion, knighted all this weekend. This all happened, by the way, this weekend in Las Vegas at the Venetian Hotel. <clears throat> so the question I, I get frequently from people is, John, you have an extraordinary life. How did this all happen to you? You guys want to know? Here's how it happened. So we got down on our knees and we prayed, okay? And when we prayed, let me just tell you, you know, we pray for things for God, to God. God, send me a million dollars, please, and I swear I'll go to church every Sunday. Let, let, me, let me just tell you something. Do you ever wonder that maybe when you pray to God, that maybe God is sending you what you're asking for in a different package? You ever wonder that? Do you, do you think that when you're asking for a million dollars that God's going to send it to you in a briefcase by a FedEx package and send you an email and say, from heaven, okay, one million is on its way. Tracking number is this. See, I believe God is so mysterious. He asks, gives you what you're asking for in a different package. See, a lot of you guys are like, God, I want to know about real estate. God, I want to find the significant. God, I want to have better health. And whatever that is, is a reason why of all the people, 7.5 billion people on this planet, and somehow or another, you get connected with J.J. Azenian. Wow, really? Right? They J.J. then knows me, and I know these people. Are, there's, there's a connection here somehow. Okay? Whether you are a believer or not, if you just say it's faith, law, attraction, whatever you want to call it, it's happening for you right now. And you have to recognize this opportunity and you got to do something about it. Now, I also want you guys to know that you, you know, you, you got to embrace technology today. You know, a, a lot of people have not embraced technology. I mean, you got to, a lot of you guys don't have systems in your business. The word system, S-Y-S-T-E-F. Y'all know what that stands for? It stands for save yourself some time, energy, and money, right? And the reason they say that nine out of 10 businesses fall, fail in the first two years is because they don't have systems. They don't have coaches. They don't have mentors. Guys, let me just tell you, be careful when you follow these mentors and coaches out there, right? You know, you really need to meet them. You know, there's so many of these events out there. All they do, it's a pitch festival. They sell and sell and sell and sell. And it's all, it's, it's nonsense, guys. And then you know what you all do? You keep on signing up for all this crap. $50,000 for this and $40,000 for that. It's, it's nonsense. You buy program after program after program. Here's what I would tell you to do. Look at their track record. Someone's going to tell you how to a great marriage, but they've been divorced 35 times. I don't know if that's the right person to be taking advice from. Are, are you with me, right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is. They've had so many bad experiences. They might tell you what not to do and what to look for. But I mean, you, you understand, like, be careful about all these. You guys, I, I, I went to an event and I won't mention the person's name. I, uh, this guy was, he was on stage. He was telling everybody how he's a multimillionaire. It's so successful and this and that. And then down the street, he parked his car and he slept in his own car. Okay. And so I said, oh, maybe he was a little bit too much, you know, like a little bit too much drinking. So he pulled over just, you know, and didn't even know where he was at and slept in his car. Yeah. But it was a three day event. And they said that they saw him sleeping in his car three nights in a row. 
And so I asked him, I called him like, hey, some guests that attend the event saw you sleeping in your car. What's going on? And he goes, yeah, you can't get a hotel room. What's your deal? Come on, man. Don't lie to me. Be truthful. And uh, I called him out. And so he says, uh, you know, John, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I can't believe that you're sitting up on stage selling the world that you you're all this. And yet you don't have ten thousand dollars to your name. I mean, it's just so sad. It's re- it really is sad. You know, and, and a lot of you just need to stop buying into all the BS out there, you know, and your own BS. Some of you guys are such good salespeople that you've closed yourself on your own BS. <laughs> you know what BS stands for? Not bullshit. It's your belief system. Okay. You bought into all this stuff that people programmed up here and you believe some of this stuff. Okay. So here's the thing. I want you to embrace technology. Let me give you an example. Why in the world do you go out there and hand somebody a business card now? Okay, I mean, you know what most people do with a business card? They put it in their pocket or purse, and then they go home, and guess what they do? They throw it in the trash. Okay, you've been there. You've done it to other people with other people's business cards. So here's what I would recommend you do. I want you to learn how to create your own QR code. Can I teach you that today? Can you guys all learn how to do your own QR code? You need a QR code. I got mine. This is, if you scan this, this is my phone number. Here's how, I'm going to teach you how to do a QR code right now, okay? This is worth just being here today. Can you guys believe that people teach, share, they literally like charge you an arm and a leg for you to charge, to create a QR code for your product, business card, website, whatever. I'm going to teach you guys how to do it right now for free. Are you ready? Here's what you do. I want you to go to this website, goqr.me, Go. QR.me. Okay. You're going to go in there and then you see this little red icon. I circled it for you guys. You're going to go to the contacts. Once you go to that contact, you're going to put in your last name, your first name, your title, your website, maybe a business number, whatever. Okay. And that's what you're going to do. If you want to do a website, you can create goqr.me just using a website. If you want to promote your personal website. Okay. Then you just go through it at the very end, on the very bottom, it says, boom, you're done. You can literally create your own QR code in less than like three minutes. Then what you do is you screenshot your QR code, and there you go. I, and then you just put it on your website. You put it on your business, your top of your phone. So guess what? When I go somewhere, you guys, and I, a big networking event, I don't have time to sit there and hand out on my business cards, everybody. Here's what I do. I tell everybody, uh, they go, can I get your business card? I whip out my phone like this and I go, Psh. and as soon as I turn on, my QR code pops up on the front top of my phone and I go, just scan this. They're like, oh, that's so cool. They go, that's so cool. And then they scan my QR code and then my phone number gets embedded right into their cell phone. It doesn't matter if it's an Apple phone or a Droid or whatever, it goes right into their contacts. And now my phone number is in their contacts all the time. Okay. And then my title says Think and Grow Rich, all that kind of stuff. And people are reaching out to me now, not taking my business card and throwing it into the trash. This is what I mean by leveraging and understanding technology. Don't fight technology, embrace it, okay? I'd like to spend a couple minutes here and teaching you about financial security. Number one is you need to increase your cash flow, okay? Y'all need more to make more money, all right? And... I, and, and here's the thing. Please don't take this the wrong way, all right? Some of you guys bought into this thing called multiple streams of income, all right? Now, let me tell you a little bit about that. Here's my personal opinion. And you take it as a grain of salt. And they'll say, uh, you know, J-Lo. You all know who J-Lo is. You know, J-Lo's got, you know, eyeliner line. Are you within perfume, makeup, clothing? Uh, she's got movies and TV and restaurants and shows a part of the Miami Dolphins and all that. Let me just tell you, I know J-Lo. I interviewed J-Lo, okay? J-Lo did not, starting at the very beginning of her career, do 25 things all at once simultaneously, okay? If you want to get really good at something, you got to spend all your time, energy, and money on that one thing and become an expert at it, like really good. And then guess what? Once you've mastered your, your skills and your expertise, and you got some money saved, then you could start dabbling into some other opportunities. 
Oh my God. Like I hear people, they go, I go, so what do you do? And they go, well, I'm an actor. I got, I'm a notary. I'm a real estate agent. I do cryptocurrency. I do, you know, NFT. I do insurance. I do, I'm a public speaker. I'm a movie star. I'm an artist. I'm a personal coach. I'm like, what the hell? What? How you, you kidding. You think I'm going to hire you? Not a chance in hell. Does that make sense? Right? Because you're one of those jack of all trades kind of people. Okay. What I, what I recommend you do is build up your brand as an expert in one area. See JLo went and made her, all her time energy was on one thing. She made all that money, lifted up her brand. And then after she had millions of dollars, she started dabbling in everything else. Does that make sense to everybody? Some of you guys are like, what do you do? Oh, I, I sell new skin. I, I sell this herbal product. Oh, I'm doing CBD now, gummies. I don't know. Oh, I do that. Oh, I'm like, oh my God, no wonder. If you tell me you're, you've got a million dollars, I don't, I cannot believe you. And the only way I'm going to believe you is you're going to have to show me your bank account that you've got a million dollars in there. Otherwise, I won't believe that you've got a million bucks. Okay, so do one thing and put all your time into it. Master it. Go make six figures. Now, some of you guys, just so you know, that's what I mean by having increase your cash flow. Some of you guys said, man, if I just had a break and I had a little bit of money, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of money where you can go. So I want you to know this. Every state, all 50 states, this is going to be crazy, but I want you to, this is going to be an awesome awakening for you guys. They have something called the Department of Unclaimed Property. Okay, Department of Unclaimed Property. So what the hell is that? So what happens, everybody, is the Department of Unclaimed Property, every state, all 50 states has it. If you guys have, let's say, a telephone, a bank account, credit union, maybe you're the beneficiary of somebody's life insurance policy. Or maybe you quit a job and after you left, you didn't give a forwarding address and therefore your employer didn't know where to send your last check or something. So what happens is they cannot keep that money because that's theft. So they send it to the Department of Unclaimed Property in the state that you resided in. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go, not right now, okay? But when we get off of this and when JJ ends this program, I want you to go in the department, like we'll just use California. California, Department of Unclaimed Property. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your last name and your first name. Do not put in your middle initial. Let me just say that one more time. Do not put in your middle initial, why? Because if you do, it narrows the search. Just do your first name and your last name only. Then hit what? Search, and then you'll see this thing pop up. I just did mine. Look at all these different John Shins at what address is. And down below on the bottom, you can see one, two, three, four, five pages of all these. When you click this little number over here, do you see my cursor? And I'm saying like all these numbers here, you're going to click it. And when you click it, it goes in there and it tells you that you got money that you could just send the, the paperwork to the state of California and they'll send you the money as long as you provide a driver's license and proof that you actually own this money. So let me give you guys an example. I did this event. I spoke to this lady and the lady in the middle of the audience was so excited. She jumps out of her chair. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. She's screaming. Right. And I was like, Oh my God. She's like, John, she screamed my voice. I come down off the stage. I'm like, what's going on? Is everything okay? Are you having, I mean, you're not having any, you know, issues here. She says, I think there's money for me. And I was like, okay, let's look at it. Get this. It turns out there's $172,000 from Wells Fargo bank sitting there that her aunt and uncle had died and left this money for her as the beneficiary. Wells Fargo couldn't find her. So they sent it to the state of California. She got $172,000 and I helped her fill out all the paperwork. You know what I took out of this whole deal? Nothing. She says, can I take you to lunch or dinner? I'll buy. I said, okay, let's go to In-N-Out. Now, some of you guys are not from California, so you don't know what an In-N-Out burger is, but I'm a pretty cheap date. I'm good with In-N-Out, double-double with uh, animal fries and a chocolate milkshake. I know it's not healthy, but it hell, it tastes good, Okay. So I'm a pretty, hey, was that pretty good for $172,000? There might be money sitting there for you guys right now. 
And JJ and I only take a 20% split. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. It's all yours. I don't need that money. JJ don't need that money. We don't need your money. We're already successful. We want you to get this money so you could be where we're at. Does that make sense? Because it's lonely at the top. Does that make sense? You know, it's lonely. We would love to have some of you guys live our lifestyle, okay? So we can have fun at the same time. So now some of you are like, but I lived in California and then I moved to Arizona and then I went to Nevada, and Washington. Every state you've lived in, go and check it out in every single state. Why? Because there might be money there for you. Okay, so just don't check one state, check them all. All right, so that's what I mean. There's money there for you. That's what I mean by increasing cash flow, right? Do you even know, can you imagine, you know, the news spends so much time out there talking about all this stuff, CNN, constant negative news. But they don't talk about things like this. Okay. All right. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is managing your debt. Get out of debt. Now there's good debt and bad debt. Okay. Real estate is good debt. Credit cards are bad debt. Okay. I don't care what you say about credit card. Credit card is bad debt. Okay. Number three, have an emergency fund. We all know now we've been, we've been through pandemics, lockdowns. Market crashes, recessions, financial crisis, 08, 9, and 10, or 07, 8, 9. We've, we've all experienced that. We all know that you should have more than a 90-day emergency fund. You got to have the right kinds of insurance, okay? Uh, people, you know, it, it's crazy that you go buy insurance on this little thing, right? You'll buy insurance on that. You'll buy insurance on your car. You'll buy insurance on your house. Well, why don't you go buy life insurance, because if God forbid, if something happened to you, your husband, wife, and your children will be dependent on your income. And if you don't have income, you better have a big fat life insurance policy to take care of your family, right? Take some fiscal responsibility, okay? Number five, create a long-term savings account. Number six, asset protection, legacy planning. You know, one of the things that you guys go, but I got no assets, I don't have anything. That is BS. Again, that's your belief system. Let me tell you what your asset is. It's called IP. You know what IP is? It's called intellectual property. What? What is intellectual property? It's what's going on up here in between the six inches of your ears, right? What you got up here is worth what? Money. Why not take what you guys have up here and let's copyright it. Let's patent it. Let's get some, you know, protection across it. Some of you guys may want to just coin some phrases. And guess what? If you for, if you just went and owned a certain clause, are you with me on that, right? Just do it. Sound familiar? Hello? That, that, have you heard that? Just do it. Who owns that? Company called Nike. Does that make sense? You can't use that. Nike will sue the crap out of you. So there's little phrases that we can protect that you can own. Are you with me on that? And then when you do, you own that. And now people have to pay you it to use that brand or IP or whatever it is. And all this stuff is asset protection stuff that we can get into as well. But these are things that JJ and I would love to teach you guys more of. We just can't do it in 35, 45 minutes. Okay. So my thing for you guys, do you ever think about what you think about? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Whatever you think about. Okay. Is so important. I know JJ's a thinker. I know I'm a thinker. I mean, I, you know, I think all the time, but I don't think about what most people think about. See, most people think about scarcity. Most people think about world war three. Most people are worried about, you know, all the negative things. See, guys, I want you to know I don't watch TV. I don't watch the news. I don't listen to the radio. I don't, I don't even know what's going on. I don't have to go and watch that because everybody tells me about it anyway. Okay, so what do I got to do is watch all that stuff? I want to go and figure out how I could be the best version of me. Does that make sense? And I'm not nowhere near. Are you with me on that? Being successful. Yeah, am I, am I probably doing better than most people financially? But who am I comparing myself to? A bunch of broke people? No, I want to compare myself to other people like an Elon Musk. So when I compare myself to what Elon Musk, I'm broke, okay? And then I, I, like my money is like nothing compared to like what his net worth is. So you know what that tells me? I still have to be humble. 
Okay, I still have to learn. I don't know it all. So I tell everybody, don't be bitter, get better. See, a lot of you guys, that's your choice. You could either be bitter or get better. I chose to be better, right? I, I want to be the best husband. My wife had one shot at that, married one guy, and that was it. And so guess what? I don't want that, mis that, that decision of hers to be a mistake. I want her to know that this dude, okay, was going to deliver, okay? I want to be the best son, the best brother, the best father, the best friend, the best coach, the best mentor, okay? That's what, it, that's what it, I want to be the best. And I'm far from being the best. There's only one person that's perfect, and I'll never be anything like him. My whole life has tried to be the best Closest thing I can to this one man. And that's it. And today, today, I want you to make some decisions. Do you hear what I just said? Make a decision. Decide. See, the word decision comes from the, the word decide. Well, where does the word decide come from? It comes from the Latin word de, D-E. Do you know what that means in the Latin word? It means to do. Do you know what the word side, C-I-D-E means? It means to kill or to die. So that means it's do or die. That's what decide means. Do or kill. Kill all your excuses. You could sit here all day. Oh, it's President Biden's fault. It's President, you know, you know, Bush. It's President Clinton. It's President Trump. All you can play the blame game all you want. Can I just tell you this? I've made millions of dollars under every president. Okay, so the presidents don't decide how much money you and I make. Okay, it's on you. So do you ever think about what you think about? See, you know, look at Albert Einstein says that the world we have created is a program, it is a product of the way we think. And we cannot change the world we live in and the world you live in unless you change the way you think. Let me give you an example, how you're all programmed. Give me a favor. What does that say right here, everybody? What does that say? Do it. Give me a favor. In the chat, da -da 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 -da, chat type it out. I want to see what you all say. I'm going to go to my chat. What are you all saying? Uh-huh. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right. Oh, look at that. Yep, everybody's typing. Good times are here. Good job. Okay, good. Come on. If you guys not know how to type, use those fingers. All right, let's go. Good times are here. All right, everybody's doing it. Thank you so much. Okay. So, good times are here, everybody. Okay? But, but, that's not what it says. Y'all see that? That's not what it says. Okay. You see the way you're all programmed? That's what it is. So here's the thing. A lot of you guys are also um, TFA. I want you to write this down. Your thoughts, whatever you guys think about. Okay? Your thoughts every day, thinking about what you're thinking about, will affect the way you feel. Okay, if your thoughts are anger, I want to kill that guy, I want to beat him up, right? What, that will influence what? Your feelings. And then your feelings will then influence the way you act. And then your actions become your results, and your results are all predicated on the way you think. Everybody with me here? Okay. So this is why I say, you guys, you got to protect this. I defend and I guard what I lay into my what? My mind, my all that kind of stuff. Okay? So a lot of people will say, I think someone said, oh, well, Donald Trump puts out negative tweets. I'm like, but I don't read the tweets. I don't even let it in. I don't even know what he's posted. Okay? Because I, I can't go, what am I going to do? Call Trump like, dude, you're mean or whatever. Hey, Biden, you're mean or whatever. Right? Uh, Obama, you're, you're mean or whatever. You guys, do you really think they're going to do something different because of me? The only thing I can control is me. And that's what I'm going to control on a daily basis. And this is one of the things that I'm going to control are my dreams. Okay? Most of you guys, you dream too small. Your dreams are so puny. 
but it's important that you dream big. It doesn't cost any more than to dream small. The problem is that most people don't dream big enough. Dr. Martin Luther King said most people die at the age of 25. We just don't bury them until they're 85. Because most people have given up on their dreams or sitting on their couch in a fetal position playing the victim card. Okay? So listen, a dream written down, everybody, with a date. Why do you got to have a date? By putting in a date, you have a deadline. There creates a sense of urgency. Can you imagine if the IRS said, you can file your taxes anytime you want? What happens there? You never file your taxes. But guess what happens? They said the deadline is April 15th. So what do we all do? We file our taxes the night before, right? Some of you guys are even going down to the post office and you're not doing it digitally because you have a date. It creates a sense of urgency. That becomes a what? A goal. Your goal broken down to the little mini steps Everybody with me on it becomes your what? Plan. You've all heard people say that people don't plan to fail. They fail to what? Plan. You know, I said, people say, John, I want to co-author a book with you. Let's do it. What's your plan? I don't know. I thought you had the plan. Well, that, that's, not a, that, that's not a good plan. Your plan is to copy my plan. Okay. That, 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 I want to know what your plan is. And then a plan, just so you all know, backed by action becomes your reality. Man, take a picture of this, copy it, and slap it on your bathroom mirror every day. So you got to go, what am I dreaming about right now, right? What's my goal? What's my plan? My, what's my reality? Okay? See, a lot of you guys, things are holding you back. Let me just tell you, here's a monkey, right? Beautiful little guy in Costa Rica, and they go to trap these little monkeys, and then they do all these crazy things. Terrible, terrible. So they, they put a bunch of peanuts in there, and then they, they go in there, and they strap these, uh, these uh, what do they call it, um, these coconuts down to the branch. So then what happens is uh, the pe they go in there, the monkey goes in there to grab the what? To grab all the peanuts, and then they make a big old fist, and then they can't get their hand out because the fist is bigger than the hole. So instead of letting go of all the peanuts and running for survival, it holds on to those peanuts for their own demise. So what's the moral of the story? Let it go. Some of you guys are holding on to all these things in the past. In the past. Let it go. Okay, you're holding on to that stuff. It's not serving you in any way. So here's the thing. Let go of what's holding you back. Today, make that decision. Make a decision. Decide. And then get rid of these toxic people out of your life. You have to. I had to. It was one of the hardest things. These were my wife, my friends. And I'm like, but they're my friends. Why aren't they supporting me? Right? Why aren't they, why aren't they encouraging me? Why aren't they praising me? Why aren't they recognizing me? And I want you to write this down. I want you to write down the word EPR, E-P-R. You know, when people can't breathe and, and their heart stops, people need CPR, right? You got to give them chest compressions. You got to give them mouth to mouth. Well, look, it's not like we, you and I can go around and give mouth to mouth to people every day. So instead, we need to give people what? People are dying right now. They feel like it's the end of the world. They feel like there's no hope, Okay. And so here's what we got to do. We need to EPR people right now. You and me, every day, we got to EPR. So what does EPR stand for? We got to encourage people every day. We need to praise people every day. We need to recognize people every day. And if people are not encouraging me, praising me, and recognizing me, then guess what? They are toxic. I don't want to have anything to do with them. If they're raining on my parade, guess what? I don't want to be around those people. People. So I heard some people say to me, John, that's so easy to say. It's easier said than done. I know. So, John, how did you do it? You know how I did it? <laughs> I, I, I changed my voicemail. And this is what it said. I'm making some changes in my life. If you don't hear from me, you're one of them. <laughs> okay? Just change your voicemail greeting. What in the world are you doing hanging out with people that aren't inspiring you every day, encouraging you and praising you and recognizing you? Ladies, all the ladies, all the ladies in the ooh, 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 
house, okay? Let me tell you something, ladies. If you are a mother and you gave birth to a baby, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, 10, 12, even if it's one, I got to tell you this, ladies. If you could carry a child inside your womb for nine months, okay, and go through all that and then deliver a baby, there's nothing you can't do. Are you kidding me? There is absolutely nothing you can't do. And if you took that little child and you raised a child and you did, you know, uh, some of you've done like kindergarten, first, second, third grade, how many times now? You know, when you teachers, I love all you teachers, I respect you, but teachers, you understand that when you give those assignments out every day to your, those first graders and second graders and third graders, you do realize that it's us parents up till two o'clock in the morning working on those projects for our children. Okay, you're doing all that. It's funny because our daughter came, you know, so we're picking up her up from school. She gets in and goes, dad, guess what? I got a 10 out of 10. I got an A on my project. And my wife and I, we, we high five each other. Why? Because we're the ones who did it. Okay. So just like you did, just like you changed their diapers, fed them, did their homework, paid the bills, did the laundry, went shopping and tried to figure out how to put food on the table the next day and pay all your bills. If you figured out all that stuff, there's nothing you can't do. There's no question in my mind you can you can have a successful business. So I want you to know that some of you guys need sales opportunities. You need someone to know your product, your service, your uh, your whatever you've got. You know your commodity, your intellectual property. You need to have a funnel. You need something that you can sell this product. I want to show you guys some the ultimate sales funnel. Get this. So, hey, by the way, you guys, this is not a solicitation. It's just if you want to come and see the movie Think and Grow Rich, we're offering it. Just go to tgrlegacymovie.com, register, scan the QR code, and watch the movie. Okay. So, otherwise, here's what we do. You go to tgrlegacymovie.com, okay? I will give you a funnel. So, it'll be like tgrlegacymovie.com, not a funnel. I'll give you a web, uh, a link. And the link will be tgrlegacymovie.com forward slash Mark, right? Uh, it would be forward slash George, forward slash Yatam, forward slash Anita, whatever it is, you tell me. Then Pete, you take that link and you go post it on Facebook and Instagram. Then when they go there, they, receive, they can go there and reserve a free ticket now. And then uh, we got Andy Garcia, a big Hollywood actor. <clears throat> then they will see all these different people in the movie. And then guess what? You and I can co-host a movie night together as an example. Okay. Or JJ and I can host a movie night. We get people to watch a movie night. We could do it Monday, Tuesday, anyway, Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. But to watch the movie for free, they got to put in all their information. Well, guess what, guys? There's your lead generation right there. Come and watch the movie for free. It's a lead. All right. And then guess what? They enter the raffle to get some giveaways. Um, and then we ask them some questions. Now, all these questions are customizable for your business. Okay. So if you sell, uh, I don't know what you sell, but we can, we can customize all these questions. Four, five, six questions to really filter out exactly who is our audience. Who are the demographics? You tell us what it is, we'll change it up for you. And then you go and do what? You market this, and then this becomes your lead generator. So let's just say, I want to know, are they a business owner, self-employed? Are they in financial services, uh, to personal development or other? Do they need a coach, a mentor, PR, branding? What, what do they need? They want, are they a homeowner? Some of you guys are in real estate. This will generate hundreds, if not thousands of leads for you guys. Are you interested in any of these other products? Are you, uh, what matters most to me now? Confirm your information, book a consultation time. It comes like this. And then we, we give you something called the robo dialer. The robo dialer, you just log into our CRM and it just calls the phone numbers for you. And then your phone rings and you're just like, hello, you know, and then you start talking about your product or service. You don't even have to do the calling. It's a robo dialer. The system does it for you guys. How would you like to have that? Okay. Now I charge five to $15,000 for that service. But if you're here today, I'm going to offer it to you guys for free. 
Come on now. Don't tell me that JJ doesn't bring value to you guys. I could be selling this to you guys for 5,000 bucks. I just offered it to you guys for how much? Zero. Okay. Double, double with grilled onions. Number two combo. Okay. It's a deal. Okay. You, you, some of you are like, but I got this great product. Nobody knows your product. They don't know your name. They don't know your product. But do you know that 1.5 billion people know Think and Grow Rich? So why not go brand Think and Grow Rich and sell your product on the back end of that? Okay. Anyway, I just gave it to you guys for free. Take it or leave it. Doesn't matter. You decide. So just so you guys know, like I said, what's more important? Trust or likability? We said Trust takes time, likability makes time. So I, I don't have time today, but I'd love to tell you guys the 18 things that you could do to be more likable, okay? There are 18 things that you can do to be more likable. So let me just tell you this, a few more slides and I'm almost done. I wanted to know what makes up 100% in life, okay? So I added up, the numbers, isn't that kind of weird? Like we don't have 21 letters in the alphabet or 45, there's 26. So I took 26 and then guess what? I wrote, I lined up the numbers. You guys understand what I'm doing here? So T would be 20, W would be 23, A would be one, right? You guys see that? So I wanna know what makes up 100% in line. So I looked up this word and the word is knowledge. So I looked up the word knowledge. I thought knowledge is everything. They say knowledge. Well, if knowledge is everything, I added this up and guess what? It only comes up to 96%. So knowledge is not everything, okay? So then I thought, you know what? Maybe it's hard work. Someone you just gotta work real hard. Well, it really, is that the key? And I added up the numbers and guess what? Hard work only comes up to 98%. So that wasn't either. So I'm thinking, what it could it possibly be? I looked up another word and it's called what? Attitude. Attitude. And guess what? Do you think that numbers don't lie? Look at you add up these numbers right here and it comes up to 100%. Oh man, that's a mic drop right there. Oh, mic drop everybody, right? Your attitude is everything. It is everything. Okay, seriously. I Man, people say my, my life sucks. Compared to what? You woke up today, how bad was it? Think about the guy that's sitting on a life support system in a hospital, okay? I mean, gosh, that's my doorbell going off right now in my house. Okay, here we go. So guys, if you're going to quit, could you quit making excuses? Could you quit blaming everybody? Quit going on vacations you can't afford? Quit buying shit every day you don't need? And most importantly, could you just stop quit quitting? Okay, hello? Y'all hear me loud and clear? Man, it's like, when are you gonna stop quitting? It's like, oh, I started guitar. Oh, how good did you get? Oh, it hurt in my fingers. It hurt, my fingers started getting callous. I just, I don't wanna play guitar anymore. Right? You want to get good at something, man, you got to stay laser focused like a heat seeking missile. All right. Let me just end with this, guys. Time is not running out, but your life is. It's precious. I got no time, no room for no gossip. He said, she said, oh, I don't like him. And what? You know what? I like everybody. Everybody's entitled to their faith, their religion, their political views, whatever. That's your deal. Does that make sense? Doesn't mean I have to hang out with you. Does that make sense? I don't have to agree with you, but you have the right to do whatever you guys want to do. What are you doing with your life? Man, I got, I got time. Where, man, let's go, go, go. And if you look at the word success, everybody, the most important letter in the word success is the letter U. Without the word letter U in the word success, there is no success. And without U in the word success,
Those two C's in the word success stands for chum change. Or you can make a decision today and the S's on the end of the word success stand for the dollar size. John, thank you for a fantastic presentation. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Gold nuggets rain from the sky. If you guys are, are watching this presentation right now on YouTube, please like the video. Please comment below. Uh, we'd love your feedback. Look for more videos coming up with uh, Flipside with JJ. Please follow me um, on the internet. I've got jjazizim.com. If you want to network with me, network, network with my group. It's networkingwithjj.com. So please reach out. We're here to help you. Uh, thank you for being on. If you guys are on the call right now, don't go away. We're going to do breakout rooms. Everybody else, over now. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.